Hello, this is the Political Forum for Wednesday, February 20th, 2013. We welcome today as our guest, the one and only Senator Patricia Van Bell of the 5th District. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum today. Happy to be here today. Great. Right. Thank yes. you. Yes, really great to have you here. It's a cold evening and you made it in a busy time of the year too yes. for you. Yes. Yes. You know. And I'm Ali Kaba, a board member here at uh, Can TV. This is a live interactive uh, show brought to you as a community service by Can TV. And as always, we will like to have your questions or comments for Senator uh, Tricia Van Bell. And also uh, call us at 312-738-1060. Uh, 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 feel free to call in at any time during the show. We are going to be discussing a whole range of issues today. So first of all, uh, how is Springfield? It's busy. Yes. It's busy. Lots of people down there, uh, lots of advocates, lobbyists, special interest groups. It's been a little hectic. Yes, yeah, I can imagine that, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's really great to have you down there, you know, someone who has been in the community and of the community and with the community. Right, it's yes. really an exciting, dynamic environment, especially for someone like me who uh, enjoy working with uh, the government to try to make uh, better opportunities for our people in our communities. Right, and you know, I really want to get on straight to one of the issues that uh, forefront of our, you know, concerns as the community members in Chicago, which is public safety. Yes. And you've been really a leader on that issue, mm -hmm. and I'm sure our viewers would like to uh, get a sense of uh, what you are really doing about public safety today. Right, well, I'm an advocate for evidence-based models, models that have proven that they work. And the reason why is because we have, we have limited dollars now. We're constantly trying to find out how to cut back. And I want to make sure that we use the dollars that we have for something that we know works. And two of the programs I know work uh, are both ceasefire program, which is a, um, an initiative, a public health initiative that works to improve public safety and has been very successful. And then there's Safe Passage, where there are a number of uh, schools where they have uh, support for the kids as they come to and from school. Mm -hmm. There are also some local programs that have been very effective as well at bringing people together and reducing crime. So that's what I'm interested in, and that's what I try to support. And it's really great that you mention uh, ceasefire. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they've been in the community for for a long time and uh, been very proactive in addressing some of the issues that we uh, all know about today. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad you also raised the issue of uh, the tight budget. You know, right. So, so how do you see uh, the uh, uh, possibilities of keeping such evidence-based uh, providers out right. there that are playing very important role in our communities today? Right. Well, I think we have to deal with the pension problem. The pension problem is a serious challenge because so many people have put money in to their pensions and, and believe that their pensions would be there. Now we're down to this point in time uh, and it looks it doesn't look good for any side, not for the government, not for the people who are waiting on the pensions, not for our communities. We have to find real solutions and I'm really just hoping that the federal government does something to support us at this time. Yeah, it's really important, you know, and uh, we are really happy that we have a caller already on the line. Uh, caller, you are on. Hey, yeah, um, I'm calling because I think that there was a vote today on the same-sex marriage legislation passing in the Senate, and did, did it pass, and then um, did you vote for it? If so, why do you support it, or why are you against it? Uh, the vote was on last week. I mean, or, or, let's see, yeah, last week. Today is... Well, it was on it was on uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I voted present on the bill, and the reason why I voted present was because of the fact that the surveys that we did in our community, which I didn't do myself, we Ask America did it, uh, showed that there, the community was basically split on it. Fifty-two percent felt that it didn't matter one way or the other. Uh, Thirty-seven percent felt strongly that we should pass it. So the numbers were not strong enough for me to just take a stance on it one way or the other. I am a preacher, as many of you may know, that I, I, out there I'm an evangelist and I believe in the Bible. Um, but when I was elected, I was not elected to be the preacher for the area. I was elected to be the representative for the area. So therefore, it is my job to represent the view of the people. And when I feel that I can't do that any longer, I, need to st I feel like I, I would need to step down. But I took that all into account before I came into this position. And I understand the role that a, a pu public official should play and we should represent the people who, we, who voted us in, and that's my goal. Thank you so much. And we have another caller on the line. Caller, you are yes, on. Good evening. Yes. Uh, with the rising gun violence on the streets of Chicago, a lot of people are demanding action, and tomorrow there is going to be, um, the House Judiciary Committee is having in a, in a time for people, the public, to speak out about gun control. 
uh, in the city of Chicago and in the state. So I just want to know, what is your uh, take on gun control? I believe that we should have a right to have uh, guns um, as, uh, as citizens of this great country. I think we need sensible gun laws that will you know, have, give us, put us in a better position to be protected from people who may want to do harm to us. Um, I do not believe necessarily that if we increase the penalty for carrying a gun, I don't believe necessarily that that would bring down the number of people who actually carry guns because usually if a person is going to do something uh, illegal, um, they're not thinking about penalties. They're thinking about what they want to do. They don't see themselves as getting caught. They see themselves as, as being successful in their endeavor. I think that the laws we have now are, are strong and, and I, as far as uh, uh, punishment for carrying weapons, but I really think that we need to uh, go forward like the rest of the nation has and figure out how to have gun laws that make sense for our state. We're the only state in the union that does not have conceal and carry on, on our, um, as one of our laws. Uh, we don't allow it. Um, so we will have to make a decision about that. We will have to pass a law that allows conceal and carry. And I understand that I'm not against it, um, but it needs to make sense for Illinois. And that's what I'm, I'll be looking for when the bill is presented. You are watching Political Forum, a community service of Can TV, and I'm Ali Kaba, a board member here at Can TV. This is a live interactive show. Feel, feel free to raise your comment or questions by calling 312-738-1060. Uh, we are going to also move on to another interesting issue that's uh, really uh, important to uh, many of us in Chicago today, which is related to juveniles. You right. know? And uh, you, you turn on the TV these days, you know, you kind of always uh, feel saddened to see young people, you know, uh, dealing with uh, either the criminal justice system or falling victims right. in our communities, right. you know. Yeah, walking aimlessly, many, yes. many of them. The, you know, the district is very diverse. It's, uh, it runs from Cicero on the west end to Clark Street on the east goes as far as 2600 south and all the way to 2300 north. It's very diverse in income, uh, ethnicity, um, culture, and but one of, the thing, one of the things that I heard over and over again, uh, and I hear over and over again as I go out into the communities, and that is that people want to feel safe. And they, many of them are afraid of what's happening with our young people in the schools and on the streets. And I, you know, I'm also concerned uh, one of the things I think we should focus on is trying to keep our ch children from getting in the criminal justice system, from deterring them from that type of uh, activity. And I think that can be done through, uh, first of all, us taking a focused look uh, at what the challenges are for young people. Young people act silly sometimes. They may get arrested for, you know, being in a big bunch or doing different things, but we cannot throw the key away when that happens. We have to find a way to restore them. And one of the bills I've introduced uh, just uh, that I'm supporting, I'm a co-sponsor for, is a bill that allows, uh, if a juvenile is arrested but never goes to court, in other words, they, they get just released from the police station, that they don't end up with a record, uh, a criminal record. Uh, they haven't been charged with anything. They're, they're not, um, they don't go to court, so they should not have a record. If these kids then go and try to get a job or go to college, it comes up that they've been arrested. Even though they've been, they was released, they was arrested and released, it shows that they, you know, it makes it appear that they had been convicted of something. And I'm trying to uh, work now with the Juvenile Justice Initiative to be sure that this bill passes that uh, would keep the state from releasing the, I mean, the police departments from releasing the information to the state so that, therefore, the kids won't have a record unless they actually get charged with, with something and go to court. That's really great, you know, and I've been following that issue, actually, mm -hmm. and I know Maria Mukaba and some other groups have been working on this issue. Right. And uh, to turn again to another issue of concern to many of us in Chicago today and to families here, it's uh, the Chicago Public Schools' decision to close schools, you right. know, and what are taught in this, and how, in fact, has, are these schools chosen, you know? Right. Right. Right, and that's a, that's a good question, um, and I know the aldermen, some, several of the aldermen I've spoken to are really looking at this issue, trying to find out, okay, how are we making the, these decisions? They're, based, they, they're clearly not just based on, uh, on population uh, or the number of students that attend the school. They're, they have other issues that they are taking into account, and I think those things need to be brought to the light. Uh, we understand that we have lost a large population here in Chicago, over 200,000 people have left uh, the state. Um, we have uh, lost a, a lot of students, and so therefore, 
there are you know some schools that, that, that don't have as many students but we need to take into account also what experience those children will have when they have to move from one school to another great and uh, we have another caller on the line caller you're on hi i wanted to know if the state senator supports an increase in the minimum wage absolutely absolutely a hundred percent every time they've increased it i've been in support of it uh, because I believe everybody wins when there's more money, when people have more money, they can pay their bills and they, they can um, participate in, 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 um, in our economy in a greater way. It's always good all the way around, around. That's the way I see it. I'm sure some other people don't see it that way. <laughs> well, it's good that uh, you see it that way. Yes. You know, it's really good for our community, especially now. You know, uh, it's, it's not acceptable to have uh, people work and not able to right. pay their bills. You mm -hmm. know? So there are more weeks in a year than the checks you get right you know, they right can make it you know right yes and uh, also talking about that it's a good search way for us to address the issue of jobs i mean right. that is the word mm -hmm. now i mean we we know that uh, you know the downturn in economy still continues you know and uh, so what are your thoughts on job creation and helping to turn around this economy well i really believe right now uh that we as a country um the, the citizens of this country and and in illinois residents of Illinois to begin to think about how we can make money, you know, how we can go into entrepreneurial um, opportunities to bring resources to ourselves. We've get come to a place now that we tend to wait for other people to create jobs. We want to know when it's, you know, Ford coming in, when mm -hmm. it's some other company coming in. They're, they're, we have gifts and skills right in our house. Uh, people in our house have gifts and skills that we could use those skills and those gifts to uh, start businesses and to employ people. In fact, the largest employers are the small businesses. They 70% of the jobs come from small businesses, not from big companies like Ford or, or, or GMC. So I, I want to encourage people to take advantage of entrepreneurial opportunities. And I know that the city is working to create more opportunities like that. And I think we should you know, pay attention to that and then get, you know, get some courage, get some courage to try something. Because it's not going to be easy if we just wait for someone else to come and save us. The capacity to save us many times is right in our midst. Uh, the ability to save us is right in our midst. We just need to have courage enough to step out. And one of the bills uh, on another, uh, on another um, uh, angle of this issue, uh, I just introduced a bill, Senate Bill 1659, which provides tax credits for employers who hire ex-offenders. So if someone is able to put together, you know, some skills and some abilities to come together and create entrepreneurial opportunities, jobs, and if they hire ex-offenders, then if this bill passes, they will be able to get $1,500 for each ex-offender that they hire. We have 37,000 ex-offenders that came back to Illinois communities mm -hmm. last year, 25,000 from Chicago alone. We have um, millions of people in prison. When these guys get out and these ladies get out, they need jobs, they need opportunities. And so I introduced um, Senate Bill 1659 to help address that, to encourage people to hire some of these people coming out so that we have a better opportunity for all of our communities to be safer. Yeah, thank you so much for that. We have another caller on the line. Caller, you're on Political Forum, Can TV. Thank you. Good evening, Senator. Good evening. Wondering what your stance is on the uh, marriage equality bill. Yes, we, we spoke about that just a minute ago. Oh, that, okay. that passed in the... In the Senate on uh, Valentine's Day, uh, it was 34 yes, 21 no, and two present. I was present, and the reason why I was present, I voted present, was because of the survey that was done by We Ask America. It was a poll done in the community where they polled the residents, and we found that 52 percent of the people felt that it didn't matter one way or the other if the bill passed. 37 percent felt strongly that it should pass. Uh, being a representative of the people, uh, with 63% saying it didn't matter or they didn't want it, they either didn't want it or it didn't matter, I felt it was best for me to vote present and not to try to lead the people, but to be the people's voice. And I voted present because me, myself, I believe everybody should have equal rights, uh, equal opportunities. I think as, if we miss the opportunity to uh, support equal rights at any time or justice at any time, then we miss the opportunity to do right by ourselves and by our country. Uh, we knew, I knew the bill was going to pass before I voted president. We, uh, we always take a, a vote in the back, so I knew it was going to pass. I voted president to represent uh, the views of the 5th District. 
Great. And I also wanted to uh, kind of remind our listeners, our viewers, really, about the work you did in the past about Black Brown Unity. And yes. you are one of those uh, we are visionary leaders in the community connecting immigrant rights, you know, right. civil rights, and really helping to bring uh, this great movements together, you know. And uh, we're at a time right now where there's a possibility of comprehensive immigration yes, reform, you know. finally. Yes, yes, you know. So uh, what are your thoughts on that issue and how can we really ensure that this time around we really finally get a ball to the... Well, I want to encourage everyone to be involved in the immigration reform work. And the reason why is because our, our society depends on the immigrant workforce. In fact, there's a net increase of jobs as a result of having undocumented immigrants here in this country. And if, if 20 million undocumented immigrants got up and left the country, we would be in dire straits here in this country. So uh, I would encourage people to support it because they, these, many of these people come here looking for better opportunities, even as we are looking for better opportunity, uh, opportunities. I've had uh, news people uh, call me and say, well, what do you think about those uh, Mexicans taking your jobs? And I said, well, what do you mean by that? They said, well, you, they're taking jobs that should be given to black people. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, why do they have to be black jobs? I mean, what makes those jobs black people's jobs? You tell me that. To me, it's, it's, it's really discriminate. discrimination. It's a racist statement. Uh, the jobs are jobs. Anybody can get those jobs. And uh, like I said, there's a net increase. The research shows that there's a net increase in jobs as a result of the immigration, immigrant po uh, population. So I think we should support them. They want, they want to build families in this country and they want to uh, move forward as a people. I think we should join in and move forward with them and also call on them to move forward and join in with us as we move ourselves forward as African Americans or whatever ethnicity, whatever your background is. I mean, I just recently um, was at, uh, went to a Greek Orthodox church where they were uh, coming together to talk about the fact that uh, they are being discriminated against in Turkey and how that they do not have religious freedom in Turkey. And they were asking us in Illinois to stand with them, uh, to support them and, and have a resolution that says that, you know, what Turkey is doing is wrong. Now, for some people, they may, they may think, you know, it's none of your business. You shouldn't be involved with, in it. But whenever people are suffering around us, if we don't do something about the suffering around us, it will eventually come into our own homes. So, yes, I did go out there to the Greek Orthodox Church, and I do support the resolution, and I am a co-sponsor. And, you know, if I was there, I worked hard on the driver's license bill because, you know, if, they, if we have people here driving and they can't even get a driver's license, and then and they can't get driver's training or insurance, that's, that's going to hurt all of us. So we can't ignore uh, the opportunity to support. We have to support when the opportunity comes. And the opportunity is here now for us to support immigration reform. And I'm 100% behind it. Thank you so much. And we have another caller on the line. A caller? Hello. Hi, hi. Um, thank you very much for taking my call, Senator. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on, I guess, the, the sort of trail of corruption that's been coming out of Illinois recently, um, obviously with uh, Jesse Jackson Jr. and his wife having pled guilty today um, to inappropriate spending of political campaign funds, and then some recent questions about uh, Toy Hutchinson um, and how she uh, doled out money to relatives. I was just curious to sort of get your thoughts on those situations as well as Illinois and political appropriateness where it comes to campaign finance and how monies are spent in transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, as you probably know, Illinois is the corruption capital of the country. Chicago is the co corruption capital city. Uh, we spend um, millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars on corruption. The cost of corruption is hundreds of millions of dollars. We have to become more aware and be more engaged on a community level and what's happening because even when I'm in Springfield 99 out of 100 people that come to my office are either lobbyists or representatives of special interest groups very few residents come down so what happens is that when the legislators either in Washington or in Springfield after so long it seems like the ones they're representing are the lobbyists and the special interest groups because they hardly see any of us everyday people coming down to express our concerns. I want to encourage people to get involved in, in government. And I know it stinks. It's like being, in a, being a vegetarian in a sausage-making factory. And I know it stinks. No, no vegetarian wants to go through a sausage-making factory. But that's what we have to do in order to take control of our own future. Um, 
the corruption I th think is so rampant here because um, it's been left, you know, it's, it's been left uh, unabated. It hasn't been addressed, and people uh, ignore it. They they cover for each other. It's not like this in other states. Illinois is just in bad shape when it comes to corruption. So. I think more people need to get engaged in the government. I think the ones that are voting, don't think you can just vote and go home that you've done your duty and you want the politician to finish the work. It's not like that. You have to be engaged and you have to play a part. And as we do, when they see that more of us are engaged and playing a part, I think less of them will get caught up in so many of these different corrupt corruption um, activities. Yeah, thank you so much for that, you know. And uh, when you currently look at uh, the fact that, uh, you know, we are in a state uh, that is uh, broke too. Yes. The most part, you On know. top of it. I don't, there are many non-profits that are struggling right now, mm -hmm. as you know, and uh, they are under tremendous stress, you know, and uh, you mentioned the pension reform. Uh, what's the prospect for that so that we can start to see a turnaround, especially for those grassroots organizations right. that are doing the work in the communities? Right. The pension problem is a big problem and it's, it's really a hard problem to solve because just think, People think that they're going to retire on $3,000 a month, and then we say, well, in 2013, you were going to retire on 3000 a month, but now you're going to retire on 800 a month. You know, we're going to render a lot of people into poverty who never intended to be in poverty. That's why I'm hoping that we have some type of rescue on the state level, and I know this, you know, a lot of people are against the rescue on the state level from the federal government, but I'm hoping that we have some type of rescue uh, situation, even if it's a long-term loan situation from the federal government to help us to get out of the challenges we face right now with the pension reform. Um, I don't want to see people rendered in poverty, but I also know we cannot allow the state to go broke. So we need help. We need support. And, mm -hmm. and we need to reach out to our uh, federal officials and tell them that we do need that support. Yes, I say amen to that, you know. Uh, we're about to wrap up our show right now, and we just have a few minutes left, Senator uh, Watkins here, or actually Patricia Van Delt, I keep right. on going back, right. And, uh, are there any final comments you'd like to make? You know? Well, I just, you know, I ran because I wanted to be sure that the voice of everyday people gets back into government. Yeah. We've had, you know, a long time where I've gone to Springfield and I feel, feel like I'm a bother to uh, my, my uh, elected official. Yeah. I, want, I don't want that same business as usual with me down in Springfield. I went down there to represent the voice of everyday people, but that can only, I can only be successful if I hear your voice. I must hear your voice. So I encourage you to get involved, get engaged. Don't let, uh, you know, don't let it just go by and let it be okay for things to be like they are. Make something happen, and, and to make something happen, you have to be involved. That's very true. You know, you got to be there. Right? And it's more than just voting, as right. you said, right? You know? Right. And so uh, on behalf of Can TV, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for appearing on Political Forum today. We look forward to uh, many more visits uh, from you. Right. And uh, for those of you who have been uh, watching us today, please, this is the contact information for our senator here, Senator mm -hmm. Patricia Van Pell, and it is 2312 West Harrison Street. And the phone number is right there for you. Please take note of it, 312-888-9191. Keep that in mind and uh, call and make sure that uh, she knows that you are in the district. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to uh, working with you as we move forward on issues that matter to Can TV and our community of viewers in Chicago. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah.